Hello, hello, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Muse 2 EEG sensor into Touch Designer. And this video is going to kind of focus more on the technique, not so much on the graphics, but we will make a little animation, generative animation in Touch Designer with the Muse 2. And you can see that I'm wearing mine on right now. It's been a little bit on my list to get one, and I recently did. And it was fun to kind of just see how the process, the pipeline to connect to Touch Designer works. So what is a Muse 2? What is an EEG sensor? So Muse 2 is a pretty commercial grade EEG sensor. An EEG sensor helps gives the brain waves um, data. So there is theta, alpha, beta, gamma, and alpha is usually related to creativity and deep daydreaming. Beta is more on deep thinking and delta is more on deep sleep, whereas gamma is usually associated with problem solving, happiness, and compassion. In the Muse 2, it is um, advertised for better on meditating. So you have the Muse app, you can see your brain waves while you meditate and can kind of track with that. So it's kind of like a tracking device. And I use this application called Mind Monitor. It's about, it's about $15 on the app store. And this app will let you be able to use OSC out um, to Touch Designer. So before continuing, if you have a Muse 2 sensor, I highly recommend to download the uh, Mind Monitor app, and I'll show you how you can set up the Mind Monitor app to connect to Touch Designer. So, as always, I'll start with the clean network, and I'll first show you how to connect the sensor onto Touch Designer from my phone. Make sure the Muse 2 sensor is on the on button is on the right and it should have like a solid color and you can connect via Bluetooth. You can check that it's connected um, on the Muse app. So over here it's like, okay, this is my device. And in the application, you should see this. And if it's not connected, they should have an icon saying how uh, over here, right here, <laughs> please connect to your Muse headset. So let's, let's, be a little bit finicky, but we'll clear it out. Connected, back connection, come back to here. Great. And you should see this interface. Cool. So now we see it in the settings. I'm gonna look, scroll down, scroll, oh sorry, in the first area over here where it says OSC stream target IP. Make sure this IP is the same as your computer or also on Touch Designer, if you put OSC in, you can have this local address and make sure that it's the same. So over here, 1916814, one nine two one six eight one four, and another thing: make sure that your Wi-Fi is the same as your computer. So this will have it, so it, it is in the same um, IP network. And over here, I set the stream port to nine zero zero two. So I'll also change this port to nine zero zero two. Can have any number, but some numbers sometimes will be a little more difficult to connect it. So. You can see that um, it there's things happening, but I don't see it on my OSC in. So what I need to do is click on this stream button. Sorry, this one. So now streaming to one nine one six one eight. I'm not seeing it. So let's go back to settings. Let's try a different um, different stream port. Let's do nine zero zero five. There you go. So now I can see it on this OSC in. Now I got it onto. 
So now in Touch Designer, what I really don't want, you see all these different data, what I want is the alpha, beta, data, theta, gamma. And you can see that what I kind of have a problem with with the headset, I feel like it's not very uh, uh, consistent data coming. And that's just something that unless someone in the comments have an idea, that's just something you kind of have to deal with. But I'm going to have select that, those ones, and add a select chop. And I notice all of these have the word absolute in it. So I'm going to just put absolute here with a star. Oops. Okay. Absolute. And I get all the absolute data. So in all absolute data, I'm going to add a null here, and I'm going to call this eg data. Cool. And I'll start making the visual by adding a noise top. In this noise top, I'm going to make the resolution pretty small, so 15 by 15, and have this monochrome on. I'm going to choose what I want to have this um, data to effect. And I will first have the alpha be the amplitude and the beta be the period and delta to be exponent. So I'm going to see the noise kind of affecting depending on the EG sensor. And I'm going to be for the null, I'm going to add a filter just so it's a little more smoother. I'm gonna add a null after this. And I'll call this EG noise. And then I will add a geometry comp. And I'm gonna change this geometry to be a sphere. And the sphere, I want it to be pretty small. Radius 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And I will have the render and display flag up. And in the instancing, I'll turn this on. So what's happening is my my um, app is getting the Bluetooth is getting on and off connected. So you get this back up, but I want this EG noise to be in the translate. I have this be R G B. Cool. All these like little noisy little particle balls, and I'm gonna do the same thing for scale. So drag scale and have this actually just be R R R. Let's play with actually having this be. What would happen if we have this to be B? No, I'm going to have this all be B. Cool. And also color. So in the second instancing, the color op, they also put the EG noise. And I have this B, R, G, B. Awesome. So you can add more of these little ball particles or less by changing the resolution. So if you want it to be more, you can, let's see, like we put 20 by 20. And versus if we had like 10 by 10. Keep it to 15. And then let's change the color a bit. So I'm going to use a lookup. And in a lookup, I'm going to use my handy dandy color picker tool. In some of my previous tutorials, I featured this tool. I'll put the link to it in the caption below. It's on the touch signer form. 
And I'm going to select this color because it's like, I really like this palette. <laughs> and you can see as I change the palette, it also changes the particle system too. So that's kind of fun. And I'm actually going to make this even smaller. I'm going to have it to be 0 0.01. Which is 0.05. Well, um, I want it to look a little bit more flat, so I'm going to add a constant material and add this on. So now the colors are solid. And I will add a camera top. Move this. So I'm going to change the perspective to be orthographic and then make this be active and move this. Ah. Do something I want. I'm just, yeah, it's kind of interesting having it on the side. And add a render top. Move the camera again. And I'm going to change this resolution to be a square. So I'll do 1280 by 1280. See what different combos we can get with a different color palette. Add a null after this. I'll call this out and I'll just have this in the background just so we can see what's happening here. Interesting. Awesome. So I'm going to add a ramp to make a background for this. So ramp top and I'm going to copy this resolution and bind it to this one so whatever this change this will change with it actually let's have it to be referenced paste reference change this Oops. reference change this ramp to a circular um, make this period bigger so it has this nice kind of like fade. And uh, first, just make the color be like a blue, blue, and a lighter blue kind of thing. And I'm gonna add a composite. I have this in the background, so maybe just have it as a over. Color is a little bit crazy, so I'm going to change it to a bit lighter. Kind of fun. And play with the camera again. And it's really like a free for all. So maybe I want a little bit like a line on this so I can add an edge on this and increase the edge and I'm going to add like a feedback and I like to just use the image filter palette tool add a blur and then add that onto the composition to comp and then put that on top so now when it moves whenever it chooses to there's like this like line blur the last thing i'm going to do is add a little bit of texture so i'll add a noise have the resolution be the same 256 by 256. I'll change this to a random. And after random, I'll add a level top. In this level top, I'll have the resolution, not the resolution, opacity be 
zero five and add a add and see a little texture over here. I'm gonna change this to be sixteen bit. Does that do anything? What if I have this to be eleven by a thousand? Yeah, there you go. Actually, it's more fine over there. So this is a little EG inspired look, <laughs> and you can really play around with this and. If you make anything kind of cool with this technique, if you want it excited to finally know how to connect your sensor to a touch sensor, feel free to share uh, what you learned or what you're excited about in the comments below. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.